So in the drama room, this is the ETC 2448. This is the main lighting board that we use for the drama room and usually the stage for productions. This one's also connected to an external monitor which recently got upgraded from a CRT to an LCD flat screen. So this also has a, a visual interface. So it's a more advanced lighting board. More videos will be coming on this for sure. But it can do t up to 48 channels in um, multi-scene mode or 24 channels in two-scene mode. It can be patched with different fixtures to um, patch different dimmers to different channels. And it can also, you can also, um, cues can be programmed, for example, for shows. So currently, in the drama room, we usually use this. So for, uh, as per the diagram that we have here with some incorrect dimmer numbers which will be changed we usually have first for um, zone 1 second for center stage three for engineers right and four for backstage and five for a spotlight that we have or a special we also usually have house sorry work and house light along with color so we in this case right now we have blue yellow and um, red patched here, and that's all written down here to make it simpler for the class to use. That's the main thing with the drama room. It has to be complicated enough that you can still do advanced things, but simple enough that anyone in a classroom can use it. So patching. So now that I am editing this a couple of years later, I realize that what I see in this video about channels and dimmers, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I, uh, I need to introduce the topic of it. So, uh, what I refer to as a channel is one of the physical sliders that we get on our lighting board. What I refer to as a dimmer is a circuit on a dimmer rack that can control a particular outlet. So we can get any of the sliders on our board to control one or more lights. But for example, if I connect two lights on the same dimmer, it's basically like connecting a power bar. I don't get individual control over them. They will always act together. But I can always connect multiple dimmers to a channel because that's done in software. So I can have uh, one slider control two independent power bars, basically. So in conclusion, a channel is one of the sliders that we get on our lighting controller. A dimmer is a physical outlet and circuit that the light will plug into and patching is the act of connecting one to the other where we say we want this channel to control this or these dimmers uh, via the software. Patching on this lighting board can be more interesting. So the patch, first of all, just hit the patch button and you'll see that the patch screen comes up and it's asking you for a dimmer number. And it starts off by showing you channel one, is dimmer two, channel two, two is dimmer three and seven. So say we wanted to change the blue lights. Well, I know for a fact that the blue lights are now in the 28. So, under the dimmer button, you would just enter 28, and you'll see that the screen says dimmer 20. Press enter, and it shows you that it's currently on channel 27, which is correct. The, sorry, uh, channel uh, 37, dimmer 28 on channel 37, which we can see here. The blue lights are controlled by channel 37. So to change it, when we hit enter, it'll say channel 37. We can say channel 40 and it will change the channel 40 and press enter and now we see 28 is on 40 so now it's on this channel so this makes it easier to patch so to again so 20 so that's dimmer 28 and channel 37 and it's back last but not least on our ETC 2448 um, beginner's guide is Q. So the Q is essentially like a preset of um, all the lights. So say for example I wanted all three of these up at a certain position in my play. And uh, you can see what is a Q and then say next scene you want all the colors. Well to simply do it, create the stage the way you want. You'll see that on our main screen all of three of our um, channels are on full. Then you just go to record and you'll notice that the screen says to record queue, select number and press enter to cancel, press clear, and it says Q1. So we can say Q, press 1, press enter, 
and we see here that our key's been added. Q1 with a time fade in and fade out time of 5 seconds. So say on Q1 I didn't want the fade up time. Here there's a little button that says time when you press it. It says enter up fade time so I can say 3 seconds and down fade so say 2 seconds. Up fade is how long it takes to bring to turn the lights on. So basically from this to full and down fade is how long it takes to fade them out. And we can see now it says up 50 seconds down 2 seconds. So we can go back and say time, up time, 5 seconds, down time, 5. The default can be changed. We just use 5 because it's usually a pretty good estimate of how long you want um, each cube to take. So then for your color, bring up your next light. So say we want these three. You'll see that they're on. The screen should reflect the channel. Just press record. Enter the queue number. So in our case, we'll do queue number 2. Press enter and we can see here queue number two has been saved. So to use cues that we recorded if the channel is off and we have these faders on, I can just press Q, enter the queue number I want. So in this case, let's go Q1, press enter to confirm, and you'll see that the cursor moves to indicate that it's on Q1. And you can simply press go. And you'll see that the numbers appear in green and the lights are fading off. So the numbers being in green indicates to you that they're there from a queue. So that means even if I do this from these ch dimmers, sorry, from these channels, they don't really change anything. They stay on full. It's actually a whichever is higher basis. So if I had recorded the cue with these only set to 50%, nothing would happen as long as these are under 50. But over 50, the lights would start following this. The lights follow whichever one is the brightest. You can also see here it says fader B slash B, which is this, this is fader A, fader B, and this is fader C, B. So A slash B is complete, and our cue has being faded up 100 and the last key down 100. So for next cue, I can either enter Q2 or I can just press and go. And you'll see that it now says Q2. These lights are fading out while the colored lights fade in. So fade up is done and fade down from Q1 is also finished. And we've switched to the next cue. To stop this cue mode, so now we can see that these numbers are back on the um, channel control. Channel being yellow, if it's controlled by the cues, it's green. And we can see these are in full. So to ex exit cues, we can we can just press clear, and that'll do the fade up. Or if we press clear a second time, it'll instantly. From the lighting board, we can also set the channel. So say you're not sure what brightness you want these at. You want it exactly 25, but it's harder for you to um, set the exact values. Well, from here we can just press channel. And the channel number. So in our, this case, this is uh, let's go 25 to 27. So 25. You'll see that 25 gets selected. Uh, if I just want one channel, so say I just want 25, I can press enter and it'll say level 0. I can say 50. And we can now see it's red under 25 and we are at 50% brightness. And it'll say that the channel is captured. This is important because it means nothing you do here will change it. Even if it's higher, it doesn't follow a higher basis. No matter what this is set to, I know that helps fine. It will always remain at 50%. So to get rid of it, there's a release button. You can simply press release twice and it clears it. Say you want multiple channels. Say I want all three of my colors. So I can go channel 37. You'll see that 37 gets highlighted. And there's this through button here. If I press through, it pl it's green and I can then enter my second. So I want say up to 39. So I enter 39 as my second number. And you'll now see all three of them are selected in the middle. And then I can press enter and enter my breath to say 75%. And I can press enter again to change it. Let's say it's 75. Now, once again, nothing you do from your channels will affect this. They will remain at 75 until you double press release. So when the screen is on, let's go a little bit more in depth about this interface we see. And we'll see that the stage button has been selected. The green light is on beside it, so we're getting the stage view. We can also choose blind, patch, and settings. So in stage, let's go top to bottom. So at the top left, we can see we have this uh, Grandmaster brightness. So right now, Grandmaster is at 100% with subpage number one. So the Grandmaster is essentially this master slider. And you can see that as I bring the master slider up and down, that number changes based on whatever this is set to. So the Grandmaster is... Like, it's essentially your master. So if I have all three of my colors at 100%, you can see that they're all in full. And then I start bringing my master down. 
to half, and you'll see that it dims all three of them, along with the um, sub, with the grandmaster button. So what essentially, essentially what it does is it takes the brightness of my color lights from the position of these channels, and it divides it by two. So in this case, whatever they are is 50. So if I have these channels set to 50, their brightnesses are 25. It basically scales everything based on your grand answer. So this being 25 means the brightest light will only get to 25%. Everything is divided by four. Sub page one is there, you can actually have multiple pages. So I have 500 uh, channels that you can, that can be controlled from your screen. Well, you can still do that. And you would have multiple pages here that you can go through. If we only use one page, as 48 is often way more than that. Finally, we have stage, which shows us what mode we're in, so that can switch to blind. And we have the time, which is incorrect and usually hard to fix, and will be reset when the power goes out. On the top right, we have this channel. It's in blue, so that is basically like the, our text field where we enter. So we can enter uh, like a uh, channel 35. If we're in patching, we can enter the dimmer number, Q number, so on and so forth. If I press Q, if I press Q you can see it's asking us for Q number, dimmer number. Essentially, it's like a um, text field. So say I, ca I can now select channel number 37, press enter, and then it'll ask me for the levels of brightness, and I can see like full. And it'll set the full. So, on and so, forth. so that's essentially like a text entry field. Here we've got 48 um, of our channels that we can see grouped into groups of six. So two groups of six to 12, 24, 36, and 48. And you can see that's so what's divided here. So we've got the first 12, second 12, third set of 12, and fourth think of 12. And these each correspond to one. So number one corresponds to number one here. To 47 here. On the screen, the little numbers that you see are what's corresponding to the numbers on the screen. So 37 through 39 correspond to those on the screen. Finally, at the bottom, we have this is like your command instruction prompt. So right now, it's select channel number, and that refers to this. If I press Q, it'll tell me select Q number. Then press type. It's kind of like a help field. So if I wanted to um, record a macro, it'll tell you select the macro number. Then press enter. So basically guiding you through what you might want to do. So at the bottom we now have these two boxes that say fader A B and fader C D. So fader A B corresponds to these two and fader C D to these two. So you'd normally change these if you're using either on um, two scene mode where you can easily cross fade, or if you might be using Qs, so like fade up fade down times will appear here. Usually AB is what you would you might use for Q scene, while CD for Qs, Q scene and Qs. Under those we have Q type, time and such. That's the Q that we currently have selected. So if I press go, you'll see Q2 becomes red because we're calling upon Q2. This box at the bottom gives us information about the currently selected Q. This shows us all of our Q upcoming Qs. So for example, if I if I go to Q1. It will show me, so I have Q1, up time 5 seconds, down time 5 seconds, Q2, up time 5 seconds, up time 5 seconds. At the bottom, we've got what are called soft keys. So soft keys are triggered from S1 to S8. So S1, S8. And this allows you, usually allows you some more um, flexible functionality. So sneak and update are to uh, like, um, change brightness or update the channels. Background overrides are to perform overrides. We usually don't use those. Only is still only limited to one light. Follow is for false spots. Park, more soft keys and fixtures. So if I press S7, it'll show me another menu, such as enable quick step, sub list, solo, delete, more soft keys and flash. Flash will let, like let you flash light. And then if I press again, part, uh, load submaster, fade, rate, more soft keys and steps. So I can press 7 to go back to the main menu. There is much more you can do with the sliding board in terms of macros and such. Maybe I'll have them in a, a more advanced ETC 2448 guide. Well, another key functionality that we use very often is um, if we go to setup and we go to system settings, we can see number of dimmers. Um, channels was 48 because we at LAN we actually have 48 dimmers and 48 channels. Sport. Default fade time, we have up, down, 5, so that's when you're recording cues. What 5 seconds is usually pretty good for most shows. Default level being full, so that's pressing like the sneak buttons and such. Blackout key is enabled, so blackout key is right above the master key, and it turns off all the lights. 
And here's what we use quite often. So 15 is scene mode. So right now we can see we're in one scene without subs. Subs being submasters. So like groups of different channels to each other. This can be changed, so if we press it, you can see we can press 1 for 2 scene, 2 for 1 scene without subs, and 3 for 1 scene with subs. We never use 3 because we have because it basically sets these bottom 48 to submasters and we have no use for submasters. We have enough channels anyway, we'd rather just do patching. 2 scene allows us it basically duplicates the top row on the bottom row and it allows us to use this crossfader to go between top row and bottom row. So it would allow me to go white lights on my top row and these timers are on the top and say I have color on my bottom and I can crossfade these two sliders to bring it to fade out the top and fade in the bottom. And you can see that these are inverse. So this is actually the top row brightness, this is the bottom row. And from diagrams you see when this is on the top, the top row is at full brightness and the top row is off and this is the bottom row. The bottom row is at zero brightness and the bottom row is at full brightness. So you can use these to crossfade um, between your scenes. We usually use two scenes for like school play and talent show and such. The settings will also have output configuration. This is for DMX outputs. Just make sure all you need to know is you need to make sure it's on one and it's number 515. Because DMX is on 512 channels, so um, we usually use just the first port. But if you change it to four or two, for example, which happened once, um, then all of your lights and channels and dimmers get shifted over. Disk functions are for floppy disks. This um, board accepts floppy disks on the right side. We, we never use it. Clear functions are to clear the memory. Printers we don't use. Macros can be quite useful. I'll go through macros another episode. Same thing with profiles and such. One last thing about the display. So stage mode lets you see what's on stage right now. So as you can see, these correspond live with our dimmers. Blind shows you the cues. So turquoise is what your cue would be. Green is your last cue. So if I press Q1, I can see my Q1, I have these three at full. But notice how none of the changes are happening live. I can press uh, Q number two. Oh, Q2, and it will show me what Q2 is. So it will say, you fade up 37, 38, and 39 up to full. And you fade out these three down to zero. So fade down to green, fades up around blue, and none of the changes happen. So this is basically useful for Q editing. So I can press um, channel 25. through 30 and I can set all of these to full but notice how none of the changes have applied it even says not record so I can press record I can say record as Q3 and this is my new Q and it will show me exactly how it is all set up So blind can be useful if you're programming lots of cues for something or going through them to make sure everything's at the right brightness or adjusting them to make some of them brighter, so on and so forth. Patch is for patching fixtures. That will be in a video. And um, setup is for making the options. That will also be another video. So that's the basics of the ETC. So those are the basics of the ETC Express 2448. Thank you for watching. And see you next time.